Good afternoon to each and every one of you on the song of my ways. Reverend William Hull from Faith Deliverance Center Smith to you in the island of Bermuda. We would like to bring to you a message from the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 13 to 22. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because your word will not return to void. It will accomplish that you please and it will pass unto the thing we have sent it. Pray, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that we will receive your word. Now that with heaven and earth will pass, we have worked those stand. That your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The word is forever set in heaven. Help us to realize that the sufferings of this present time are not to be compared with the glory that will in us. In the name of Jesus Christ and for the Jesus' sake, amen and amen. Judge chapter 1, verse 13 to 22. It is written, There was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. There came a messenger unto Judge and said, The oxen were plowing, the ass is feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. Now I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While they were yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fall from heaven, and it burned up the sheep and the servants. And consume them. Now I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans uh, made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yes, laying the servants with the edge of the sword. Now I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While you yes begin the king also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house. Behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smoked the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young man, and they are dead. Now I only am escaped to learn to tell thee. And Job arose and ran his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and rushed him. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return to the The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No, did Job sin not, nor charge God, Foolishly. You see, my friend, here in the book of Job, we have told about Job's faithfulness despite catastrophic laws. Job's faithfulness despite catastrophic laws. You see, Job proves faithful despite the laws of his property and the tragic death of his children. Now after such great devastation, many people would do exactly what Satan was tempting Job to do. Question God and curse his name. Yet Job did not. The man faithful to the Lord and even praised my friend his name. Now concerning your Job's loss of all property and family, the opening scene of this passage, God and Satan met, was a prelude or introduction to the story. It set the stage to, so we can better understand what is happening to Job and why. Now Job finally appears, and four unimaginable tragedies 
strike him, seemingly without provocation or purpose, all on the same day, my friend, one right after the other, inconceivable. He would lose everything, his whole estate, and watch all ten of his children, and know what happened. One on the same day, your children were celebrating a social occasion and feasting together, a master broad job, a shockingly food, according to Job chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. While just oxen were plowing and the donkeys great grazing, the Sabians launched an attack. And in the process, they stole all of the animals and killed all of the farm and ran to labors, Job's servants. Only one person, the messenger, survived, according to Job chapter 1, verse 15. Who were the Sabians? Scholars believe they could have been from a place called Sheba in Southwest Arabia, or from a town called Sheba in Upper Arabia, according to Genesis chapter 10, verse 7, Genesis chapter 24, verse 3. But regardless, in one heavier soul, Job lost all of his oxen and donkeys and dozens, if not hundreds, of servants as well. Number two, while the first messenger was still reporting, a second messenger arrived to report more dreadful news. A fire that is a fire God had fallen from heaven and killed all of Job's sheep and shepherds, according to Job chapter 1, verse 16. Most likely, fire God refers to lightning, according to 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 38. Whether the lightning resulted from a thunderstorm, or was purely, my friend, a display of God's mighty power, is immaterial. Bolts of fire struck the earth with deadly ecstasy and flashed after the other. My friend, number two, number three, incredibly, while the second master was still speaking, a third arrived. He reported that the Chaldeans had raided Jewish camel herds. Not only had they stolen Jewish camels, but also they had murdered Herdman, according to Job chapter 1, verse 17. You see, the Chaldeans were Mesopotamians, so they liked the attack from the Lord. The Sabians mentioned above were likely to have attacked from the south. Lastly, and most tragic of all, Job lost all his sons and daughters, according to Job chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Again, while the latest messenger was still reporting, another arrived. The fourth messenger reported that a strong wind had collapsed the house, where Job's children were feasting. All ten of the children had been killed. You see, the strong wind could have been a tornado, since tornadoes can easily destroy horses of all four sides. Uh, however, because this strong wind blew from the east of desert, it was most likely what is called the Seraco. The hot and sandy windstorm that blows firstly at the beginning and then at the end of summer. And regardless of the type of storm, its effect was devastating. Curve lost all his children in a single day. 
seven sons and three daughters. In the brief span of one day, Job learned that he had lost everything. Everything he had rushed for. Everything he possessed. His business. His livelihood. His employees. His potential. The rest of all, his children. The magnitude of Job's loss is almost beyond comprehension. You cannot even imagine how Job must have felt. Job's faithfulness through all this is found in Job chapter 1, verse 20 to 22. At this final piece of news, Job finally arose from his seat. Picture the scene. Job had been sitting and listening in other shop, listening to one messenger after another. Let the every devil telling me food. But after hearing about his children that he could bear no more. Job got up, my friend, tore his robe and shaved his head according to Job chapter one, verse twenty. In other words, Job expressed a deep anguish. You see, in ancient times, tearing one's clothing and shaving one's head were common expressions of intense grief. So Job was expressing a grief in the custom of a day. However, Job's next response was anything but customary or ordinary. In fact, it was extraordinary, totally unlike what most people would do. We told Job, worship the Lord. Job chapter 1 verse 20. In the midst of receiving such devastating economic news and the loss of his dear children, Job fell to the ground in Russia. What a moving picture out of intense grief. Job still worshiped and prayed to the Lord. He still trusted the Lord to strengthen him. We could hear blurb, yet the heartbreak and devastating grief of it all. Job acknowledged two indisputable truths. Job chapter 1 and verse 21. Perhaps he could not take his vows with him when he died. Number two, second, the Lord was in control of his life. There is profound wisdom. In these two truths, God had given Job everything he had, all that he owned, according to Job chapter 1, verse 21. Everything was from the hand of the Lord. God therefore had the right to take it away. Think how remarkable Job attitude was. He did not complain or even question God, not at this time. Instead, we are told he bowed reverently and worshiped. He acknowledged that God was sovereign and in control of his life. Job also acknowledged that none of his possessors, not a single one, could follow him to the grave. Job chapter 1, verse 21. Nothing he earned could go with him into the next life. Notice how beautiful and eloquent he studies these troops. Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. What a powerful heart rendering statement of faith. To not only rest in another God's sovereign control, but also praise the Lord rather than cussing God to his face. As Satan had bargained, Job bowed in worship and blessed the name of the Lord. Job did not become better nor sin by blaming God. Job chapter 1, verse 22. Then I charged God with wrongdoing. God acted within his jurisdiction. That's then above 
all that Job owned and had been given to him by God. And Job knew this fact. Therefore, he would not dare pass or blame God. Nor why me? As stated above, as a faithful follower of the Lord, Job blessed and praised his name. Consequently, Satan's first plan failed miserably. In concluding this point, note how two of the four tragedies were men made. That is, they came at the hands of evil men, the marauding Sabians and Chaldeans. On the other hand, two tragedies were the result of natural disasters, destructive fire and the windstorm. From a human standpoint, each of the tragedies might have seemed like worldly phenomena, just plain bad luck. But Job did not interpret them this way. He knew that God had permitted them. Although these tragic events played out on earth, had their roots and their driving force in the spiritual world. As we face trials, my friend, and suffering throughout life, we need to keep Job's experience in mind. In fact, Scripture teaches we are in a spiritual war every day of our lives. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18, and 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. May I see the spiritual battles raised in heaven. Spiritual wars behind what happens here on earth. Still, we can be sure that God has all things under control. That He will use everything we experience for good if we will place our trust in Him. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It does not discount the pain and grief we feel when we go through suffering. How such, uh, my friend, knowledge gives us confidence and patience to endure the suffering. It is the trials and tribulations that cause our faith to go through hardship and struggle. We are driven to turn to God either for greater strength, my friend, or to repent of sin. Trials and suffering arouse us to trust God with more assurance. And for these reasons, we should not complain or become embittered when we face hardship. But we should praise and honor the Lord just as Job did. Listen to what God's holy word says about enduring and persevering to trials, even counting suffering as joy. I told in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, Believe that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I told in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, My brethren, count it all joy. For you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith wreckers patience. Let patience have her perfect work. Ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. I told in James chapter 1 and verse 12, Blessed is the man that endured temptation. When he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. I told in James chapter 5 and verse 10, Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. I told in James chapter 5 and verse 11, you will be counted damn happy, which endure. 
You heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord. The Lord is very plentiful and of tender, tender mercy. God bless you and be with you in the prayer of our heart.